Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. As the title shows, I wanted to create a new series where I talk about some of the most unhinged, disturbing, and darkest things that I could find from within the internet. Anything is free range in this new series, which will mostly be made up of internet mysteries, strange internet oddities, and bringing to light a lot of obscure finds and other disturbing stuff. Think of this series like those videos that cover weird stuff from around the internet, so kind of like Nexpos and Eudoxia's videos and other similar content like that. I just think it's really interesting covering stuff like this and I just wanted to bring my own take into it. I try my best to find some really obscure stuff as I don't want to bore you out of the death talking about shit that's been talked about a million times because I think it's kind of lazy if I just do that. So with that said, I don't want to waste any more time, so let's just begin. So I welcome you all to the first installation of the most disturbing corners of the internet. This entry is really fucking weird to put it lightly, and I urge you all to not contact anyone mentioned in this entry. Anywho, do y'all know about the smart school boy night situation that has been blowing up a lot recently? Well, if you don't know what that is, essentially, in Instagram, a grown man was pretending to be a child within the app and made several accounts that just posted a lot of weird stuff, such as all of these accounts posting pictures of children that were basically bordering on being CP. It's a whole case which is extremely disgusting that I actually covered when it began getting a lot of traction a month back. Since then, the case has received a lot of attention which is good. Now, you may be asking, why am I even mentioning this situation in specific? Well, during the initial research and discussion about this situation a couple weeks back, a lot of people were digging a lot of stuff about SSB. One of the things that were being searched was SSB's following and followers. And during this, someone found an account that went by the name of The Real Marco Diaz. This name may sound familiar to some of y'all as Marco Diaz is one of the main protagonists of the popular cartoon series Star vs. The Forces of Evil. A cartoon which aired in Disney and most of the viewers and demographic are children to young teens for this show. But basically, this guy whom is trying to impersonate this Marco Diaz character is posting some really concerning stuff in this Instagram page that was found. The type of content that was found within this page consisted of edited and real pictures of this supposed Marco Diaz guy touching little girl's feet. And worst of all, this guy constantly refers to himself as a PDF file. It's a lot and it only gets worse as you dig deeper through this account as it's literally filled with so much disgusting and weird stuff that pertains a lot to little girls and feet. Even though this is already extremely concerning, things get a lot worse after this point, as Marco Diaz is not the real name of this individual, rather his actual name is Edgar Neri, as some of these Marco Diaz accounts would openly state this as well. Edgar Neri, the man presumably behind these accounts, is someone who has been called out several times in the past by most notably, the YouTuber Deadwing Dork, due to his extremely weird actions and pictures that he would pose, those being pictures of him touching little girl's feet as stated earlier. And with this in mind, a whole new rabbit hole begins because of this discovery of this Marco Diaz account, as during the discovery of this account as well, dozens of accounts within all different social media platforms that go by this Marco Diaz name would also be discovered with all of these accounts also posting extremely similar stuff to one another, that being strange fan art of cartoons, pictures of him touching little girl's feet, and just typing some really vile shit in most captions, it all seeming extremely predatory. It somehow gets worse though, as even though there was dozens of accounts that went by this Marco Diaz name within many different social media platforms, the same can also be said about Edgar Neri as there is also dozens of Instagram accounts based from this man that also post the same concerning stuff as all the others. The craziest part about this is that all of this is just in Instagram alone because there's also dozens of accounts of Marco Diaz and Edgar Neri and many other social media platforms as I stated earlier, such as Twitter, YouTube, and fucking LinkedIn for some reason, which all also post a lot of pictures of little children's feet, and feature Edgar Neri himself being edited or having weird filters. I've also seen these Edgar Neri accounts, especially the ones on YouTube, 
go by weird names, such as King Edgar Neri or Evil Edgar Neri. These accounts referencing a lot of video games too, and also post videos of Edgar Neri grabbing children's feed within their shorts tab that feature very strange titles as well. There's also a lot of videos about Edgar Neri talking or speaking within these YouTube shorts and it's just extremely uncanny. Please cannot touch your feed. Uh, Matave, Matave shoes and boots. Please, please Princess Peach. Please, yes, please to Candy. Wiggly, wiggly puppy. Hundred pony, big wheezy. Addy, is it? Hundred pony. Hoo hoo hoo. Hundred day. Marco Diaz. Yes. Well, what happened to your account? It be supposing you use it, right, Marco Diaz? Uh, no, I'm I'm not using um uh, Marco Diaz account any uh no, you uh Edgarnary. This is pretty weird behavior, but. What really makes this all the more interesting is that I know some people have said that this is an ARG of sorts or are fake people or bots, which even if the latter part of that statement may have some truth to it, I don't think this is an ARG. The reason why I state this is because some of these Edgar Neri or Marco Diaz accounts have been posting for many years, like I'm talking 7 to 4 years and still continuously posting till this day. But what is probably the most weirdest thing about this Edgar Neri individual though is that there's a lot of stuff that ties to him that date back to a decade ago. But as stated earlier as well, Edgar Neri also has a history of being called out many times in the internet for posting stuff like this and also for apparently stealing art from DeviantArt, which I'm pretty sure explains the numerous amounts of posts within some of these Edgar Neri accounts that contain some sort of fan art about characters and such. Either way, this guy has been running rampant for many years and is still continuously posting stuff like this. It's obvious that this Edgar Neri guy is so far off from reality, as it's gotten to the point where these accounts will actually start harassing you if you try to DM or interact with them, turning many people off from wanting to say anything to him as this dude would actively try to follow your social media and constantly DM you. But the thing about this Edgar Neri guy and most of these accounts that you can find is that this man also has a history of just calling out random people on social media and making full-fledged posts about bad-mouthing these people. He will literally go on tangents with his social media, calling out people and calling them some very weird names and things that I can't show in this video for obvious reasons. But there's many posts within Facebook and Instagram from these Marco Diaz or Edgar Neri accounts that just call out anyone for any kinds of reasons. It's extremely disturbing and confusing seeing all of this. Like, why is there so many accounts about this guy and why does he post and say the things he does? It gets crazier though as these accounts would also openly state a lot of possible information about themselves, such as where they live and where they work. But I don't know whether this is true or not, as this information seems to fluctuate a lot. This whole situation is just really a horrible rabbit hole to see unfold. It reminds me a lot of the Ori Chief Facebook accounts that Nexpo covered. It gives me the creeps as this man is very clearly grown and is aware of his actions. Speaking of which, this guy has also been found to be supportive of Smart Schoolboy 9 as he would post some of these pictures from the situation within his account. He's also been leaving a lot of strange comments within the SSB reddit. There's just a lot about this guy and even though we know so much about this guy apparently, we also know so little. I even tried digging up more about this guy but I found nothing else. Other than an article of a man who also goes by the name of Edgar Neri, except the man who was featured in this article and mugshot, got arrested back in 2023 for trafficking the Walter Y substance. And even though the two do share the same name, I don't think this is the same Ed Neri that is running rampant on Instagram. Some facial features just don't line up with one another and this guy was arrested in Georgia, which doesn't line up with most of these Ed Neri accounts referring to themselves as living in California. And we know there is some truth to that statement because there are several photos of Ed Neri holding up this piece of paper that states a school that is from California. And also because he has leaked himself several times in many different social media platforms. And it's not like this information is bullshit either. Most of this information actually dates back to 2017. 
So I think it's just safe to assume that these two aren't the same person, which leads us to our next point actually, as the last few pieces of information or assumptions that are based out of this guy mostly comes from people assuming that this man has some sort of learning disability or is schizophrenic, which is causing him to act on impulse like he does within several of his posts, which even though I can understand that this can be a reason as to why he posts stuff like this, it still doesn't make it any more better. As from some posts that I can find as well, it seems like Edgar Neri is also aware of what he's doing. I've even seen some people in the subreddit about this situation further validate that assumption as some users have stated that Edgar's parents know about his actions and fixations over feet, but aren't doing anything about it. But I don't know if that's accurate because this is apparently all supported by an apparent 4chan thread that was created from a supposed family member of Edgar Neri simply stating their frustration over Edgar's actions and how everyone essentially defends him in the family, no matter what, also stating that he is indeed disabled and does have a lot of kings, with other commenters within this thread also stating other stuff about Edgar Neri, such as the apparent child's feet that he's touching in most of these pictures is a family member allegedly. There's other comments about Edgar Neri within this fortune thread as well, one being that Apparently, people believe that Edgar Neri has a history of being a pedophile, which yes, even though he does say all of this wild stuff, there has also never been any actual reports or any real evidence to actually show that this is the case. Like I said before, I'm not really too sure which is the case. All of this is just assumptions to try to explain what we don't know. Either way, just watching this unfold just does also make me realize that this could all be just a huge byproduct of Edgar's presumed disability if those claims are true. There is a high probability that Edgar Neri simply just needs help and needs to be monitored a lot better if he does have a disability, cause even if he does have one, this situation is still not right no matter how you try to put it. At the end of the day, I think it's best to just keep bringing more awareness about this situation and before I end this entry, just remember that everything that I mentioned, for the most part, is based on speculations about what we know and what we have been seeing. So none of this is conclusive, so don't take it as all fact. Till then, all we're left with is just another disturbing rabbit hole that needs to be looked into a lot more and given a bit more time. Moving on to our next entry, we will talk about some really concerning links that are being shared across Instagram. So if you have Instagram, chances are you probably are accustomed to seeing bots. It's a given as bots are literally a giant plague that isn't just specific to Instagram, but other social media platforms as well. And if you're aware about all of this, then chances are that you know about these PORN bots as well. The very obvious fake accounts that pretend to be women most of the time to try to lure people in by showing extremely revealing photos of themselves to try to scam these people or to take their personal information. They do this by sharing a link in their bio most of the time, and if you click on it, then you're kinda screwed. But with all of that said, I'm assuming you guys know about these bots though, as they're extremely common within Instagram and other social media platforms. And even though me talking about these weird bots seem kind of funny and kind of stupid, this entry unfortunately is anything but that, as although we are talking about Instagram bots, this entry is rather talking about another kind of bot, well more so new comments that these bots have been leaving within popular Instagram posts that are way different and more concerning than your usual bot messages. These new comments relate back to something a lot more nefarious and have been advertising something extremely disgusting and illegal. As there's seemingly a whole black market within Instagram of bots advertising that they're selling CP, they'll advertise this by commenting stuff like, baby artwork videos in Telegram, link to CP in bio, watch videos of youngsters in Telegram, videos of children under the age of 15, and there's a lot more variations of these comments that are straight up deranged and horrible. It's genuinely disgusting and infuriating seeing how stuff like this is commented, but do you guys notice something about these comments that are left behind by these bots though? Other than the extremely vile messages within these comments. Well, if you don't, most of these comments always mention Telegram. Telegram, for those who aren't aware of what it is, is essentially an app that you can message, call, and video chat with other Telegram users. You can create group chats and join channels based on an interest or subject. It 
It sounds innocent, almost, right? Well, the thing about Telegram is that it's used for everything other than what I just stated. Telegram is primarily used by a lot of scammers, illegal merchants, and PDF files. It's used by these types of individuals because Telegram is quite anonymous, and it's also quite hard to trace an individual within the app, which leads to a lot of channels and accounts within Telegram to openly do a lot of illegal activities, such as money laundering, snuff distribution, and worst of all, CP distribution. And this would be exactly what most of these CP bot accounts on Instagram actively try to do. They would feature a link to their telegram, and most of the time, lead you to a channel that is blocked off. It's only until you activate a bot for this channel, that the whole page would change and would now look like this. And as you can see, these telegram pages have a lot of options to presumably buy CP. It's all masked under some genre that, what I'm assuming, is what the content is based off of such as school, dark net, and horrifyingly enough, it's being sold for cheap. This screenshot that I just showed you in specific is from a user on Reddit. I borrowed this because I'm not about to click on one of those fucking bot links myself. But if the current situation about Instagram and CP shows, chances are this is an actual way to buy CP. And it's terrifying how this can easily be accessed and generally be found. Literally, go to any popular Instagram post and go to the comments. I guarantee that you will find a random account that will have a message like this, which even though it's in English, most of these CP coded accounts are actually not based out of the US, as most of these accounts, especially the ones that I can find, have a strange foreign username attached to them most of the time which are more in line to be based out of Russia or Middle Eastern countries in which the laws for CP aren't as strict compared to the US. So unfortunately, it's not like these disgusting individuals can get arrested so easily, especially since they're also using Telegram and are based out of somewhere else in the world. Leaving these accounts to just roam around and comment in whatever they see fit, like I stated earlier, personally, I have never been in one of these telegrams, nor have I clicked any links related to any of these accounts, but I would imagine that from what I can find online about these telegram channels, chances are they work as how I mentioned. Overall, it's just really disturbing, because why the hell is this being posted so frequently, and why is it happening so much now? And that's the thing. We really don't know what caused the influx of these CP coded comments to spread rampant around Instagram. Neither do we know who began this wave of using bots to promote stuff like this. And it just goes to show how big of an issue the distribution of CP is becoming. Even though this whole situation is doom and gloom, I have seen some people state that these are merely honeypot accounts created by the FBI to try to capture PDF files, which I wouldn't be surprised if some of these accounts are that. But even with that in mind, this situation gets a lot worse as Instagram as a whole generally has a CP problem already. It's gross and I know this entry seems very sporadic and very broad, but I wanted to talk about this topic in specific to spread awareness and to show that there's a lot of abuse that's happening within Telegram and Instagram regarding this topic. Because if these accounts are actually distributing CP, they need to be looked into and reported massively. So hopefully, Instagram gets their shit together because this is extremely vile. But this has been happening for a while now and nothing has changed about it. So unfortunately, as sad as it seems, I don't see Instagram doing much about these vile comments or accounts anytime soon, as Instagram doesn't really monitor their own app well, which leads to stuff like this being posted and all these links being shared so easily. It's just a very horrible and disheartening situation, so if you see any of these bots, please make sure to report them. It can really go a long way. In October 2022, a TikTok account named Running Away Forever 8 began getting significant traction within the app. The reason why? It centered around a user named Max, a young user on TikTok who was posting videos about their desire to want to run away in order to escape from their abusive father. 
whom, according to Max, had started to assay them, with the abuse starting right after the death of their mother. That would be the first post within this TikTok page, and throughout October to December 2022, this account posted videos somewhat often. These videos all revolving around the users, aka Max, urged to want to run away, with the first post of this account being the video I just showed y'all, which talked about how Max's father had began to essay them after the loss of Max's mother, with Max also stating that they have contacted the police just to be ignored by them because they didn't believe it was true because they were just a kid. This is already extremely distressing and saddening, but as time went on, Max's post grew more concerning, such as a video that was posted early on in this account that was posted on October 14, 2022, hinting that Max wouldn't be around for much longer, a statement that is also posted within this user's bio. And after seeing this video, it becomes quite alarming and apparent that this user would have a lot of depressive thoughts. This is only further cemented as we keep seeing the videos posted within this account. But despite this ominous message though on the 14th, the account continued to upload content for a few more weeks, with each post having some time gaps in between after this point, ranging from a few days to a few weeks, with subsequent posts becoming more alarming. We can see this first happening after this October 14th post. There was nearly a month time gap in between with then Max creating the following post on the 6th of November. This post stating how Max's father found out about their TikTok account and ended up hurting Max. With Max seeming completely defeated by this point, as this post would also seem to allude that this has not been a one-time occurrence, rather something that might happen regularly which only further fuels Max's desire to want to run away. Radio silence happened yet again after this post, until Max would upload another post three weeks later. This post showing Max packing a bag to get ready to run away again, and after this upload, we wouldn't hear from Max again until three days later, on December 1st of 2022, where Max would simply post these last two videos. These last two videos are extremely notable as it shows Max's face for the first time, with Max seeming completely defeated in one of them, and the final post that would be made in this TikTok account would be this one, with this final post being about Max stating that this is the worst year of their life, and after this, the account will stop posting, with users shortly after seemingly noticing Max's absence as well. Days without Max posting turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months, and months turning into years, with people only getting more concerned about Max. And because of this, people started making up rumors about what happened to Max, as time just continued flying by without any updates from them, with the most popular rumor that spawned during this time of silence being that Max had sadly passed away. Either by their own accord or their own father did something to them. Comments within Max's profile were now assuming that this was the case and were now flooding Max's comments with grievance. And even though this could have been a possibility that Max had passed away, it was never confirmed. And if anything, this rumor was all started by a TikTok user that went by the name of Period Tip 17, whom, when people started noticing that this user would state that Max was gone, People asked for proof of this just for this person to be unable to provide any reason or proof that Max had actually passed away. But since so much time had passed since Max had posted, people just kept assuming that this was the most conclusive answer. And for the next following year of 2023 leading to 2024, that's how the consensus would remain. That Max had unfortunately passed away extremely young. And this is where the situation came to a close at least for a while, because it wouldn't be until earlier this year that a user from the internet mystery subreddit would upload about this exact situation, simply stating if anybody knew what happened to Max, with some users at the time, commenting that nobody really knew, some people speculating their own reasons about the whereabouts of Max, some people stating that since Max looked extremely young, they did this for attention whilst others stated that Max was in a depressive state in their life, but simply stopped posting to prevent further abuse. Either way, there was still a plethora of people believing that Max had still passed away, and were still flooding Max's comments with that sentiment. 
but all of this was just speculations at the end of the day. And after this point yet again, for another couple of months, nothing had came out of the situation. That would be until April of this year, where an account that went by the name of I Am Running Away Forever 8 began commenting within the comment section of the Running Away Forever 8 account, stating that they themselves are Max and are alive. And when clicking on this new account, the first thing you would see is that this account will be claiming that they are Max and that they're here to explain everything that has happened about this situation, with this new account only having one post, this post being this. I'm Max and, and I'm running away from I'm running away because my- It showed a video of Max's room with the caption to the video simply stating, quote unquote, Guys, I am Max, I am alive. I've seen some people be dismissive of this, but we know this video is original as no other video from the original Running Away 8 account would even post this, nor was there any post that put a huge emphasis on the room compared to this one post, meaning this video cannot be ripped, and we know this is Max's room as well because when we compare the layout, it is the exact same thing. Other than the drawings of the room being more prevalent and Max having new things within the room. So with this in mind, chances are that this is actually Max and they're alive thankfully enough. But just as fast as this account came to be, it then stopped posting soon after this post, leaving the account with just one post and one repost. This would end up leaving more questions than answers as nothing was really answered about Max's disappearance or situation, leaving radio silence yet again. And even though it would seem like we would end up with nothing about what has happened to Max, a Reddit user would make a comment in the Reddit post about the Running Away Forever 8 account that I mentioned earlier that stated that they actually knew Max personally and that they are still alive, also stating that they did indeed have a rough childhood. This Reddit user would have nothing else in their account though, other than this comments, nor did they provide any proof that they actually did new Max, which is fine because this still has a very high probability of being true, as Max is very young and most definitely, and probably, still goes to school as well. So this could be the case and maybe the user didn't want to reveal a lot more, as they could probably identify Max's whole identity and their location if they did say more. But after this comment, we would not get a new update for some time, at least for a couple of months, in which we finally would receive the final known update about this situation. So on July 15th of this year, another account that went by the name of Hello Everyone Love PO1 would then also start claiming that they are Max. This account would host the same video as the I Am Running Away Forever 8 account, except even though this is almost exactly the same video to one another, this PO1 account would show a seemingly extended version of this video. This video would actually show Max walking around their room, with this video also stating that they will show evidence about everything. But just like all the other accounts, this account would also stop posting, leaving with radio silence yet again, as this is the final known update about what happened to Max with only speculations now arising about what really happened here. And even though we don't have anything conclusive about what happened about this situation, we can at least debunk some rumors about this situation though. We can debunk that Max is indeed not deceased, as these two accounts will seemingly show new original videos of Max's room, with the last video that I showed, showing a further extended version of that video. Nobody has ever posted those videos to my knowledge other than these accounts, and the room is extremely similar to the ones in the original Running Away account, which makes me believe that this is actually Max. And if we're also taking this comment into consideration, Max is indeed alive. The most possible and probably accurate speculation about this situation though, was that Max was simply just in a very dark time in their life. Although we don't have details to confirm what's true or not, it's still very apparent that Max was still going through a lot of stuff within their family life. Now, I'm not going to assume or speculate what's true or not as this is the life of a very young individual, and I just think it will be like rubbing salt to a wound because I don't know Max personally, 
nor do I know the true backgrounds about these accounts. All we probably know and can assume is that Max has had a rough time during the initial span of the original Running Away 8 account, even seeming to contemplate something a lot more tragic. The situation is extremely disheartening for a lot of reasons, as situations like the one that Max had to experience happens to a lot of people daily. This account is simply just showing one of the many horrific experiences or abuse that someone had to go through. It's very disheartening and really saddening, and I think it's very disturbing just seeing how everything about this account had slowly been unfolded and just how much silence there is about it. One thing for certain though is that Max is alive though, so something positive did arise from this. I just hope for the best for Max during this situation and I will still keep checking on this situation if anything else arises. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this new series. I just really wanted to highlight some very disturbing things that aren't talked about enough as they're extremely obscure. I think it's good to bring awareness over the situations that I went over, and I think it could definitely bring a lot of good if they were simply talked about a bit more. If any update arises over anything that I talked about this video, I will make an update. But other than that, let me know in the comments what you thought about the video or any theories or assumptions that you have about anything that I mentioned in this video. But till then, I don't have a better way to end this video other than thank you for watching and I'll see y'all next time.